Good morning, students. Well, after a short break, the science geek is back. Myself, Ratna Bishwas, this time goes to make the video of class 11th biology. Biology is a very interesting subject, provided you read it in a proper way, in a methodical way, and in a systematic manner. It's not at all difficult. What I am now doing is, children who will be going to standard 11 with their fresh results of 10th standard board and intend to take need in their future life can go through these small videos because the subject is learned by as I said reading, writing and speaking. Now the lesson which I start here is the plant kingdom. This plant kingdom is a very basic lesson of NEAT, le NEAT exam. Why? Because from here starts the broad classification of plants which is there in this lesson which are the algae, the bryophyta, the teredophyta, the gymnosperms and the angiosperm. I shall be dividing this video into two parts. The first part will be about algae and bryophyta and the second part will be about teredophyta, gymnosperms and the differences between gymnosperms and angiosperms. Well students, now before we go for this uh, features of algae and bryophyte which is my part one video, a brief description of the different systems of classification which were used to study the plant kingdom. You can keep your NCRT book of your standard 11th in front of you where you can see the key words which are written are number one is the artificial system of classification, second is the natural system of classification, third is the phylogenetic system of classification. Each system of classification has their own advantages and disadvantages. After this is taxonomy. In taxonomy will be numerical taxonomy, cytotaxonomy and chemotaxonomy. This is the previous part of the lesson. Just few no, uh, part I shall tell you about this uh, classification system. In If they ask you just for two marks or one marks. Now this artificial system of classification is based on the comparison of one or few groups so on superficial morphological characteristics such as habitat, color, number of leaves etc. But this system of classification uh, remained in use for only 2000 years. But this system of classification had certain advantages. What was the advantages? It is easy to remember the uh, those characteristics which are used every day. Right? Few characters which are used every day. Second, the traits used are of interest to humans which are being used here. Now what is the disadvantage here? Uh, the, it had more disadvantage than advantage. The first disadvantage is that the system uses only few superficial characters which may be very common in many organisms grouped together. Next, this, this is considered mainly the, they consider mainly the vegetative characters like the androsium characters etc etc. And it does not demonstrate any natural or phylogenetic relationship, which is more important. Okay, so these are the disadvantages. Now, the natural system of classification. Under this, what is there? The natural system of classification is based on the natural affinities or among the organisms. It considers both the external and the internal features like structural anatomy, embryology, and phytochemistry. Now, what is the, it was given by Bentham and Hooker. What is the advantages of this? It is only uh, given for the related organisms to be kept in a group. Second, unrelated organisms are kept in separate groups. It shows natural relationships among the organisms. It shows possible origin of different taxa. Now, what is the disadvantage? There is more emphasis given on uh, natural characters. In this system, several related families are separated and unrelated families are kept together. It has neglected the evolutionary basis of classification. That is the disadvantage. Okay, now we come to phylogenetic system of classification. Phylogenetic system of classification indicates the evolutionary relationship among the organisms. The system is based on the fossil evidences. Okay, now this system assumes that organisms belonging to the same taxa have a common ancestor. This is the most important key line common ancestor, evolutionary relationship. Okay, now the system was given by Engler and Prantl. Okay, now what is the advantages of this phylogenetic system? Uh, the families and, or and order in this system are of small size. Second, 
This system is in confirmation with the modern views of phylogeny. Then they use information from various resources to solve the problems of classification. Now, what is the disadvantage? The disadvantage of phylogenetic system is that it is not helpful in plant identification, uh, mainly uh, by the morphological characters. So this was just a comparison of a natural artificial phylogenetic. Okay, then comes what taxonomies and the types of taxonomies used in the plant kingdom. You should know the keywords. For the, for the study, the different plant kingdom, uh, groups of plant kingdom, these criteria were used. What was the first one? The numerical taxonomy. It is carried by the quantitative assessment of similarities and differences in order to make the objective assessments. It is now easily carried out by using computers based on observation characters. Numbers and codes are assigned to all the characters over here. Okay, and the data is processed. That is called as numerical taxonomy. Next is cytotaxonomy. Cytotaxonomy comes from the word like the number of chromosomes in a particular organism, which are fixed. Say the taxonomy is based on cytological information, like the chromosomal number. Okay, like chromosomal number in humans are 46, right? Uh, 20 in maize, 16 in onion. So, this is taken in consideration. Also, the behavior of chromosomes are considered here using the, their pairing pattern and their banding patterns by the taxonomist. Now, we come to our last taxonomy which is being used is the chemotaxonomy. That is the system is based on the evidences from the chemical constituents like the enzymes, the hormones, the proteins, etc. and the specific chemicals and the nature of them. So, these are things, certain things which are used by the plant, uh, by the scientists to study the plant kingdom that was just a brief picture now mainly we will concentrate on algae and bryophyta now this algae if you have uh, studied under the junior classes it is an autotroph and the uh, half carbon dioxide of this earth is being fixed by this algae that will come under the economic importance of algae and uh, this algae with the fungi makes a very important uh, association known by the word symbiotic association also known by the word lichens so now if i am not mistaken we will study we will now go through the other part of the basic details of this lesson algae how by just telling me i i shall just tell you about the just a minute please You should now prepare this under this heading, algae. First is the habitat. What is the habitat of algae? Habitat. Second is the thallus organization. How is the thallus type? Third is the Structure of the algal cell. The fourth is the food material and the types of reproduction. Food reserve. And fifth is the type of Algae should be studied under these four headings, right? Now, first thing over here will be about the habitat. What is the habitat of algae? They are found in freshwater. Also, they are found in marine habitats. That is the most important keywords, right? Second is some of this algae, as I told you, are found in association with fungi, okay? And a few species are also parasites here. Now, what about the thallus? Thallus is the body pattern because here, it was the lower system of plant kingdom where there is no root, no stem, no leaf. But it had an organization, a leaf-like structure, thallus. So what was that thallus? The plant body is a thalloid that is without any differentiation. Okay, the basic form and the size of the algae is highly variable from a, and it ranges from a single unicellular uh, clavidomonas. You can see here in CRT book also, page number 31, figure 3.1, where they are giving you the different forms of algae. Here, if I have not mistaken, I can show you here. 
for in your book you can see this keep your ncrt book in front of you to study the figures the types of algae because you should keep on drawing the algae side by side when you read their features okay so so the thales organization is the uh, from simple unicellular one to filamentous one like spirogyra spirulina uh, althorax to the colonial form that is the wall box that figure of which one i showed you just now in the book okay these are the three different types you have to learn the examples here now what is the composition the structure of the algal cell algae is a eukaryotic plant cell eukaryotic plant cell and the cell wall of algae is made up of cellulose cellulosic cell wall very important right and the nucleus contains the nuclear membrane that is the difference between a true eukaryote and a prokaryote now what is the reserve food material used here the reserve food material used here the reserve food material is starch general from general algae but otherwise when we will see algae is are divided into the three different kinds the green algae chlorophyce the brown algae phyophyce the red algae rhodophyce all uh, are all these three they are different based on their cell wall composition the food reserve the number of flagella and mainly their uh, type body pattern which you will see in this due course so here the food reserve of algae is uh, starch and whereas the man manitol and laminarin manitol and laminarin are the food reserves in red algae floridian starch is the food reserve in one, one more kind of algae right so i repeat again in brown algae manitol and uh, laminarin are the main food reserve red algae floridian starch is the main kind of food reserve this is the food reserve three types of food reserve we will see a, in the form of a table in the end when we will see the comparison of the three types of algae then comes what is the mode of reproduction what is the mode of reproduction in an algae it is both asexual as well as sexual now under asexual it is through the spores the such as the zoospores the aplerospores the aconites the three different kinds of spores and the most common are the zoospores which are flagellated and motile i am telling about the word zoospores it is written as the zoospores zoospores this is the most common way of a uh, modern of mode of reproduction which are flagellated and motile okay now the zoospores they germinate to give rise to a new plant the cells which produce these spores are called the sporangia the zoospores come from the word they are coming from an another organ known as sporangia sporangia gives rise to zoospores remember that and this these are the uh, which can be the vegetative cells examples are chlamydomonas chlamydomonas normal vegetative cells or or if it is a modified uh, vegetative cell then the example is vaucheria okay so the zoospores first way of reproduction now what is the another mode of reproduction is the sexual mode of reproduction the three important keywords of sexual mode of reproduction are first one is isogamous 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 second is an isogamy an isogamous third one is two gamus three modes of reproduction you should underline the keywords over here right now what is iso iso means similar gamus means gamet so how will you tell this that mode of reproduction where morphologically similar gametes fuse to form the zygote the gametes are flagellated and they are of the same size example is chlamydomonas and if it is non flagellated but similar it is spirogyra then what is anisogamy anisogamy means fusion of structurally dissimilar gametes which differ in their size and their behavior the male gametes are more active than the female gamete that is it is also bigger in size example is chlamydomonas okay oogamous oogamous means the male gametes in this the male gametes which is motile hmm, acting small without food reserve fuses with the female gamete which is bigger in size passive and non motile so see the difference between three three types of reproduction 
mode of reproduction. Example for this is wall box. Okay, so the best Clavidomonas comes under isogamy and anisogamy both. Under oogamies, the best example is wall box and fucus. Okay, so this is this. Now, general algae as per those three criteria. Now we come to the classification of algae. I now come to the classification of algae. Okay, classification of algae. Classification. First one is, as I said, chlorophyce, the green algae. Chlorophyce. Second one is as the pheophyce. Third one is rhodophyce. is one of the most important types of green algae. Now the members of chlorophyce are commonly called as green algae, right? They are, there are around 7000 species found on this earth and their reserve food material is starch, the common algae. The main characteristics of this chlorophyce is that they are fresh water, their habitat is fresh water. Example is like uh, the chl chlorella, one very important, which is economically also very important, chlorella and algae. Okay, and some of them are also growing, growing in the snow. So that time they are known as cryophytes, cryophytes, the algae growing on the snow, C-R-Y-O-P-H-Y-T-S, the cryophytes, okay. And uh, the examples are uh, a species of Chlamydomonas, Chlamydomonas nivalis, is that which is growing in the snow, okay. Next is, what about the cell organization of a green alga? Uh, they are unicellular, first keyword, they are colonial, they are filamentous, they are synocytic, and they are multicellular okay the cell wall contains cellulose and uh, pectose in the green algae also the chloroplasts which is found here are of different shapes like they can be discoid they can be plate like and they can be reticulate they can be cup shaped you have to write all this under its cell organization because it is a eukaryote then what are the photosynthetic pigments found in green algae it mainly contains the chloroplasts are the main photosynthetic pigments here with chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, the dominating ones, okay? That's why that is why it is green in color. Now, what is the food reserve here? The food reserve, as I told here, is mainly the starch, which is found in the, in the storage bodies called as pyrenoids. Pyrenoids are the bodies which store fat also, with the fat they store a little bit of starch also. So, pyrenoids contains Sometimes they uh, store proteins also, proteins also with starch. And some algae may store food in the form of oil droplets also. So this is about the food storage. Thallus, thallus of green algae is, uh, what is the structure type? Like if you can again see green algae of your book, it is given wall box, chlamydomonas, how they have shown you the figure here. I show the figure again here. I show you the figure again here. Wall box is colonial. The uh, Chlamydomonas is having flagella and the last one is uh, Chara which is not having any flagella here, right? This one. So, the things which is here is So, the thallus, the thallus of green algae can be flagella, Chlamydomonas, non-flagella, chlorella and sometimes the plant is umbrella like acetabularia. Okay, this is about the thallus type. Then, sometimes it is in the colony form. If it is in the colony form, then we call it as wall box. And the whole colony of wall box, uh, a colony of fixed number of individual of a single cell species is called by the word synobium. They may ask you sometimes, what is synobium? Okay, synobium. So, synocytic alga. Wall box is a synocytic, uh, volva I am telling. Uh, oh, this one. Wall box is a synocytic alga. Then comes uh, the mode of reproduction. The reproduction of an uh, chlorophyce can be vegetative, asexual, sexual. Vegetative, vegetative mode of reproduction means it can go through fragmentation, it can go through tubers or storage cells or as per the types of alga there. 
okay now asexual asexual the basic mode of reproduction is the zoospore as I told you produced by the zoosporangia and the uh, apronospores are also there and also echinites are there these are different types of spores which are produced for the mode of reproduction sexual reproduction sexual reproduction shows considerable variation in the type and the formation and as uh, the way it can be isogamous it can be anisogamous and it can be oogamous that is this about the green alga okay green alga now we come to the brown algae that is pheophyce you can keep your ncert book also with you pheophyce the members of pheophyce are known by the word brown alga eh? they show great variation in their size and form they range from the simple branched uh, filamentous form that is ectocarpus is the best example here to the profusely branched kelps which we called as and they reach to the heights of 100 meters they possess chlorophyll a they c carotenoid xanthophylls these are the basic chlorophylls uh, pigments which they contain they vary in their color from olive green to various uh, shades of brown depending upon the amount of xanthophyll pigment found in them okay now what is the food reserve found here the food reserve found in uh, this uh, uh, this one pheophyce is fucoxanthin fucoxanthin the foods are stored as complex carbohydrates which may be in the form of laminarin laminarin or mannitol you can underline this keyword of your book because sometimes they can ask you in your exam give the different types of uh, food reserve found in all the algas okay now the vegetative cells uh, have a cellulosic cell wall covered by an outside gelatinous coating called as algin and this is very important and the protoplast contains in addition to plastid a large vacuole and a nucleus this is about the stru cell structure and the plant body is attached to the substratum it is holding to the substratum with the help of a structure called as hold fast hold fast is different rhizoid is different hostoria is different these are the keywords of this lesson we will come to know now and this hold fast it is having a stipe it is having a leaf like photosynthetic uh, uh, part called as the frond frond f o r n d frond stipe and frond okay now the vegetative reproduction takes place by fragmentation asexual in brown alga is by biflagellate zoospores that are pear shaped and have two unequal laterally attached flagella and the uh, alga okay sexual reproduction that can again be isogamous and isogamous and oogamous union of gametes uh, may take place in water or within the oogonium that is the female cell okay the gametes are uh, what shape they have they are pear shaped also called as pyriform and bear to laterally attached flagella the common examples are ectocarpus dicteria laminaria sargassum and fucus you will see that in my uh, video those figures right so this is about pheophyce the or the brown alga now we come to the red alga also called by the word rhodophyce red alga also called by the word rhodophyce now rhodophyce is actually the members of rhodophyce are the members of rhodophyce the members of rhodophyce are commonly called red algae because of a very important pigment found in them which is known by the word phycoerythrin r phycoerythrin hmm, which is found in their body the characteristic features of rhodophyce are first is their habitat the members of rhodophyce are uh, are uh, having mainly marine in nature with great concentration found in the warmer areas they occur in both well lighted zones of the water close to the surface and at greater depths of the water and the red thallus of the algae uh, are multicellular in nature some of them have complex body organization the food stored here is the floridian starch as i told you floridian starch there it was laminarin and mannitol here it is floridian starch okay and uh, the cell walls another thing here the cell wall uh, it, uh, is made up of cellulose pectic compounds and certain other polysaccharides called as called as phycocolloids phycocolloids and agar and carrageen carrageen and carrageen and this is very economic importance is there which you will see later on okay so the cell organization is little complex it is uh, like green alga only cell uh, cell only cellulose hmm? then uh, few uh, brown algae pheophyce not that complicated red algae is quite complicated in its evolutionary terms 
and then comes the photosynthetic pigments what about the photosynthetic pigments the photosynthetic pigments are here as i told you phycoerythrin and phycocyanin are the main photosynthetic pigments here phycoerythrin and phycocyanin the reserve food material is floridian starch and uh, which is similar to glycogen and amylopectin okay and what is the mode of reproduction reproduction is vegetative reproduction occurs by fragmentation regeneration of hold fast and also one more word is there here jenny and uh, there's a word called jenny jenny g e m n a e jenny and what is this jenny jenny is a bud or a outgrowth of a plant which de develops into a new organism new organism i am writing this word here it is called by the word jenny g e m n a g e m n a jenny jenny okay jenny okay now comes here uh, this is about the mode of reproduction and then we come to after this comes the overall comparison if they ask you give in a tabular form in your exam compare uh, chlorophyce pheophyce rhodophyce how will you compare you can write the class on first place then you can write their common name then you can tell the major pigments like i am revising it chlorophyll chlorophyce is chlorophyll a and b pheophyce is uh, chlorophyll a c and phycoxanthin rhodophyce is uh, chlorophyll a d and phycoerythrin food the major pigments then what is the stored food in chlorophyce starch what is it in pheophyce mannitol and laminarin what is it in rhodophyce floridian starch then the cell wall cell wall in green algae chlorophyce cellulose pheophyce it is cellulose and algae rhodophyce it is cellulose pectin and other polysaccharide poly polysaccharide is also found there which is called by phycocolloids phycocolloids okay then comes the next one is there a, a number of flagella they have chlorophyce has two flagella and two plus eight they are equal and they are apical in position pheophyce it is two unequal and they are lateral in position rhodophyce the flagella is completely absent okay uh, chlorophyce what is the habitat it is fresh water it is and brackish water and also salt water what about pheophyce uh, fresh water brackish water salt water what about uh, red algae rhodophyce fresh water brackish water done so this is all about it now the last part of this uh, algal part is the economic importance of algae 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 the first one should be uh, in your mind is that they, these algae are responsible for the overall photosynthesis fixing of carbon dioxide majority of the co2 six by this algae algae is only second is the green algae like al uh, alva uh, are used as food and also antibiotics are extracted from an algae called chlorella okay and uh, it is also it helps use uh, it's used in sewage oxidation plants it is used there next is some protein rich algae are like chlorella and spirulina which is used by the space travelers okay and next is some form of uh, marine brown algae produce large amount of hydrocolloids this hydrocolloid is a water holding substance and uh, uh, like uh, algae is algae is produced by brown algae carrageen carrageen is produced by red algae it's very important Okay, now one more class of algae like the geladium, the geladium algae, and Gracilaria. They produce agar, agar, a g a r, agar. These questions are frequently asked, and agar is a artificial media for the growth. It is rich in nutrients, so that the plantlet can come out of this agar. It is used in microbiology. Okay, preparation of, and also it is used in creams and jellies. So this is all about the economic importance of algae. now uh, i think i finished with algae and with that i also told you the basic classification system and the three types of taxonomies so now we come to the next group and the last part of my video that is the bryophyta okay bryophyta bryophyta some of you must be knowing this bryophyta this bryophyta is nothing but they are also known by the word the plant amphibians you can open your ncert book and see the beautiful pictures of bryophyta it's very well given there i can show you here the picture of bryophyta 
Bryophyte. Bryophyte. Okay? Bryophyte. Keep your book in front of you. Book is your Bible. So now this uh, Bryophyta include the mosses and the liverworts, liverworts and peri that are found commonly growing in the moist shade areas that is in the hills. Okay, the basic examples of Bryophyta are Marchensia, that figure which you saw, then the Sphagnum, that figure again there in your book, then Funaria, that figure is there in your book. Now, why the Bryophytes are called the plant amphibians? Because they, these plants can live in soil but are dependent in water for sexual mode of reproduction is the key answer here. They usually occur in damp, humid and shaded localities. They play a very important role in plant succession on bare rocks and soils. Very important. Sphagnum for example is used for peat formation. You will see them later on. Now, what about the thallus part? How is the body organized like you read alga? So bryophyta will also be read under the headings habitat, habitat as I told you. Then the thallus. What about the thallus of bryophyta? The th plant body of the bryophytes are more differentiated because in terms of evolution, it is more evolved than algae. So it is more differentiated than an algae. Uh, it is thallus like, which can be, the thallus can be prostate, as this figure shows you, prostate in case of marchensia. It can be erect or it can be attached to a substratum with the help of rhizoids. That figure was again, it is there in the book. Uh, you can keep your book as I showed you there in the book, it's there. You can see there, uh, see page number 34, where that uh, Jemmy are there, then rhizoids are there, Archino, Archino 4, that structure is there. I'll show it to you again here. You can draw it also at the same time, okay? So this comes there. Then comes the sex organs. The root stem and leaves are not present, like algae, like alga here also is not present. The two, because they are still evolving, the plant kingdom is evolving. Till angiosperm, we reach angiosperm, the flowering plant. So they possess root-like, leaf-like or stem-like structures, but not true leaf, okay? This you will write in exam. Then comes, what about the sex organs? The plant body, what about the sex organs? The plant body of bryophyte are more differentiated than the of an algae. They lack true roots, true stems or leaves. And also, they possess uh, the main plant body of the bryophyte is haploid. You have to write the word haploid. It produces gametes and hence the main plant body is a haploid. It produces gametes, therefore it is called as a gametophyte. The sex organs in bryophytes are multicellular. The main sex organ is called by the word antheridium. A uh, name is there, antheridium, and uh, which produces flagellated antherozoids, antheridium producing antherozoids, the male sex organ, okay? And the flowers and the female organ is flask shaped. It is called as archegonium, okay? And, it, and which produces a single end. So the what are the two sex organs in bryophyte? Antheridium and archegonium. Antheridium uh, produces uh, antherozoids. Archegonium produces the egg cell, okay? And for the fusion of, in during sexual reproduction. Then, what is the mode of reproduction in uh, bryophyte? Bryophyte shows both asexual and asexual mode of reproduction. Asexual is quite common through fragmentation, tubers, jenny, as I told you, buds, and adventitious branches. Now, sexual reproduction in bryophyte also occurs in the following way. That is how it occurs. Uh, the first thing is here the Anthrozoids are released in the water. Anthrozoids, which I told, are released in the water because they are because that's as I said, they need water for uh, fertilization, uh, for reprodu sexual reproduction. So anthrozoids produced by the uh, produced by the antheridium are released in water, and they come in contact with the archegonium. Anthrozoids plus archegonium. The egg secretes a chemical which attracts the spermatozoids toward itself. Uh, one anthrozoid fuses with the egg and produces a zygote. Anthrozoid plus one egg produces a zygote. Zygote uh, does not undergo reduction division. Instead, it produces a multicellular body called as the sporophyte. Called as a sporophyte. So gametophyte is haploid and sporophyte is multicellular, remember. And the sporophyte is not free living, but it is attached to the photosynthetic gametophyte deriving its nourishment from it. It is not free living. It depends on this gametophyte to derive its nourishment from it. So the some cells of sporophyte undergo reduction that is meiosis to produce haploid spores which dominate to produce the gametophyte. This is the mode of reproduction. Okay, that is all. Now we come to the 
classification of bryophyta it is given in your book it's of two types page number 35 the they are called by the word liver words liver words liver what words and moss liver words and moss are the two types of liver wort and moss now the example of liver wort markensia markensia is the example of liver wort figure is given in your book again on page number 34 and uh, funeria is the example of moss funeria is the example of moss okay now that is given again in your text in CRT textbook page number 34 now for this how will we see what is what about the liver words the liver words is under also known by another scientific word hepatic opsida okay and mosses are also hepatic opsida and this is known by the word bryopsida hepatic opsida bryopsy now liver words grow in moist shady places such as in the banks of the streams marshy damp soil and what are the characteristics of uh, this hepatic opsida first is the plant body the plant body of the silver wort is a thyloid as you saw here markentia okay the thallus is dorsiventral flat and it is close to the substratum okay and it, it has a stem like structure there it has the leafy members have tiny leaf like appendages uh, and also small stem like structures there also then comes what is the reproduction pattern in uh, uh, liverworts reproduction in liverwort is it is asexual as well as sexual asexual it occurs through specialized structures called gemmy as i showed you gemmy it comes from the thallus it comes on the thallus like if it is a thyroid if it is a thyroid like this the gemmy will be something growing on it This will be the jelly. So jelly, so jelly, so the asexual mode of reproduction is through the uh, jelly. They are green multicellular small buds which develop from the jelly cups and they are located on this and they are located on this thallus. Jemmy, asexual mode of reproduction. Okay. Now, what is the sexual mode of reproduction? Sexual mode of reproduction is by the fusion of male and female sex organ on different thallus. On different thallus. Like, for example, again, the figure is there in your book. I repeat again. I'll show you the figure again. Page number this, Anthridio 4 and Archinio 4. I show you this figure. It's there again in your book. Okay. This figure is there. So, sexual mode of reproduction, as I told you, how? That is accomplished by the formation of male and female sex organ on different thalli. The sporophyte develops uh, from the zygote which continues to grow on the gametophyte because it is dependent on the gametophyte. Okay, And these, the spores then germinate to form a free living sporogametophyte. The spores further will germinate to give a free living gametophyte. But initially it is attached to the gametophyte. Examples are Rikshia and Markensia. This is about the liver warts that is hepatic oxida. Now what about the mosses? Mosses uh, grow in dense uh, mats over the moist shady places especially during rainy season. Now what is their uh, body pattern? They have radial symmetry. Their body pattern is radial symmetry. Then mosses are leaf like, foilose like okay and they are two stages are there in their mode of development. The first stage is the protonema stage we call it. The predominant stage of the life cycle of moss is the gametophyte and the gametophyte has two stages. First stage is the first stage is the uh, protonema stage which develops from a spore. It is creeping, green, branched. Second stage is the leafy stage. Two stages, protonema stage and leafy stage. The leafy stage is the secondary stage. Okay, and they consist of upright slender axis, spirally arranged leaves. So for this also, the figure is there in your book uh, of uh, funeria that is coming coming under moss. Now, here one structure is there called as rhizoids. These are the long multicellular branch structures. Hmm? They take part in fixation and absorption of water. Okay, however, surface conduction through capillary is an important mechanism of water supply to the aerial system. This is for the rhizoid part. What are the modes of reproduction? Vegetative as well as sexual. In vegetative, again, budding, fragmentation, secondary protonema is, is formed from the exposed rhizoids and other parts like jenny, etc. Sexual reproduction is again through anthridia, male, archegonia, female, 
and the male sex organs are cup shaped and females are the bud like and they fuse zygote develops into a sporophyte and the sporophyte contains food seta and capsule this is a very important diagram there in your book it's given there on page number 34 of your ncrt you draw that diagram when you study so in brief i think i have covered plant kingdom ka initial wala algae types of algae differences between them bryophytes features of bryophyte differences between um, liver worts and mosses now we come to the last part economic importance of bryophyte the mosses they provide food for herbaceous mammals birds and other animals second part is species of phagnum provides peat they and that have long been used as a fuel okay and they are also having huge water holding capacity next these mosses were the first to colonize the rocks and because hence they help in biological succession very important and marchensia another moss another liverwort uh, is having lot of medicinal properties to cure lung infection and liver infections and also it has anti tumor properties so i think this is the first part of the lesson and uh, i have covered you with the key points of the lesson and uh, uh, system of classification to end with the taxonomy uh, algae features of algae types of algae their differences bryophyte features of bryophyte and then uh, two types of bryophyte hepatic opsida the moss and biopsida the uh, biopsida the uh, hepatic opsida sorry the liverworts uh, biopsida the moss and the differences between them and the economic importance of this so just go through this video study it those who are going to 11th standard it is just the starting of your 11th make notes of it draw diagrams of it i have said in a very simple language keep your ncert book with you to ensure that you get full marks in it and meet you next Uh, very soon with the second part of the video with tenerophytes gymnosperm and summing up with some important questions uh, for your exam and for your neat exam thank you